A Quick Pet Portrait Instructional by Alicia Guggenheimer. With these four steps, yes, you too can paint your pet. Supplies needed, watercolor paper, transfer paper, paint brushes, watercolors, pencil, and tape. You also can get a white pencil for highlights. All right, let's get started and get our supplies. Transfer paper, a carbon-based paper that allows you to copy your image onto your watercolor paper. You will need watercolors. You will need a watercolor paper. I use a hot press smooth surface. You can use cold press as well. That is a 10 by 14. A pencil, that's my fancy pencil, but you can use a number two pencil. And paint brushes. I use one uh, type of fine tip one, and then I also use a larger uh, size for blocking out. Next, you'll need to find an image of the pet you want to paint. I usually use a copy of the dog or cat and I center it in the center of my eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. And I print it out so that I can really see the eyes of the pet and also the details. You want to be able to have a good resolution and a little space uh, near the ear. So when you put it on top of your paper, you have some uh, background around the entire image of your pet. All right, so now we're going to transfer that image of our pet onto the watercolor paper. You are going to need uh, the watercolor paper, transfer paper, the image of your pet, and a pencil and a piece of tape. And um, I usually use painter's blue tape and I put my image of my pet in the middle of that watercolor paper, making sure the ears are centered and uh, that I have enough room on the top as well. And I just place the tape at the top of the image and that allows me to slide the transfer paper underneath. Just make sure you're putting it uh, face side down onto the watercolor paper. You can test it by seeing it uh, on your finger. I've made it mistake where I've tried and uh, did it upward. Well, you need to make sure that you put it down so that when you're tracing over the image of your pet, uh, that that transfer will go onto the watercolor paper. I do not press hard because I don't want really deep lines. I'm pressing harder today so that you can see the image, but you only need to press very lightly on. Um, and make sure you get all those details of the dog. I even put uh, lines, if the dog's all black, I put the lines where I see the fur uh, changing color. Um, now I'm going to look at my watercolors and I'm going to decide how I'm going to paint it. If you're doing it realistic, meaning the color of the dog, you're gonna use the middle value. Meaning, for example, my dog here is black. I'm going to use a gray, um, and that way I can build up uh, darker. You always wanna go light to dark. I'm also using some um, of the pink for the ears and uh, yellow ochre for, the, uh, for those spots um, on that dog. And I'm using um, my larger brush to block out the color. Um, and right now I'm activating those uh, watercolors. They are um, basically dried uh, uh, pancakes of uh, little dark colors. And to activate them, you need to put a little bit of water on them. And I let them sit for about a minute. And now I'm just setting up my workspace. And I usually have a paper towel on the side and I, simply block out uh, the colors. I go around the eyes and around the nose and I am using that middle value color to paint the entire dog uh, wherever it's black, leaving the white paper for the yellow ochre and the, um, the pink in the ears. And I just take my time and fill it in. And once I've done the gray value, I wash my brush and I continue with the yellow and wash my brush again, and I'm going to do the pink on the ears. 
All right, now that I blocked out the color, I'm going back in with black. So I changed the gray to black and I did the pupils of the dog's eyes, the nostrils, uh, very dark. And now I'm using that same black watercolor paint and I'm outlining all those lines that I drew when I uh, uh, traced it onto the watercolor paper. These lines will vanish, but they give me um, a reference point to start laying in all the details. Once I've outlined all those lines, I go back in and I start just laying down little lines all over the dog. And I'm looking around the dog and noticing the darker areas where I put more brush strokes. And I have my own style where I am laying down little brush strokes all over uh, the portrait. And eventually you'll see the dog start appearing and um, you can lay layers. Watercolor is made to be layered. So um, it's better to work light from dark and build up your picture. And once this has dried, I go in with a white pencil to add highlights on the eyes, the nose, and any white fur that is on the uh, dog. And there you go. There is my pet portrait. So just to recap what we learned. First, we transfer the image of the pet onto the watercolor paper using graphite paper. Then we go in and we pick a middle value, not the darkest and not the lightest, and we block out our pet with those colors. After we let that dry, we go in with our black and we give the pupil, the nose, nostrils, the black, and start laying down uh, layers of color until uh, we see the image of the pet uh, start to appear. It's layering, it's fun, and anybody can do it. Now it's your turn. <laughs>